Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being part of this episode, Manal. I have a special guest, and I know I say that about everyone, but I think I actually initially met you on Clubhouse, and then I didn't realize that you wanted to be on part of the podcast until later on. So thank you so much for being here. And can you give me a little short introduction about yourself, like either about your background, your interests, or hobbies? Thanks so much, Christine. Likewise, you know, I met you on Clubhouse, and it was really cool to be able to connect to the tech consulting world. Um, a little bit about myself, I'm based in Toronto, Canada, and I had a science background, went to University of Toronto, and then transitioned a little bit into the business world. Did my MBA here, and through different internships, got to experience a lot of great companies and realized that I really loved project-based environments. I love consulting, um, which led me to my last internship at EY. and. I'm currently here at EY in their strategy consulting, which is basically technology transformation consulting group as well. Yes, I did notice that you got a Bachelor of Science. Is that like what that is? Like, what did you major in if there was a degree? Yeah, it was a double major in actually biology okay. and psychology. Oh, wow. So it was a little bit different. Um, and it was really interesting because you got to experience like life sciences. Um, mm -hmm. and. The only thing that I really kind of missed was having like an internship experience. Like it was very academic focused, very lab yeah. focused. Um, and it's really good to kind of transition now into the business world. So why did you decide to transition into the business world? Was it that like maybe you just through studying, you didn't really like it or you just wanted a little bit far away from academics and more practical? Yeah, like I, I feel like I enjoyed going into sciences because mm -hmm. I thought I was good at it. Um, but I didn't really have like a passion for it, okay. right? Like I didn't really see it, it being like a long-term kind of career path. And mm -hmm. especially when I got into the labs, I was really just not entertained by it. And I really mm -hmm. wanted to be in like a team environment, not so yeah. isolated and siloed. So I think that really got me thinking. And when I was introduced to the business world, like I first worked at CPA Canada was my first mm -hmm. job. and. I realized there's so much I don't know about the business world, <laughs> how the world operates. And now I can pick up a newspaper and read it so differently because I understand mm -hmm. a little bit better. So it just broadened, I think, my viewing to the world and just business lens in general. Yeah. So for anyone who's like coming from a non-business background, how would you recommend for them to pivot? Because I think like if you started out in uh, biology and psychology, it, you don't really get that business acumen. Have you been trying to study or do some like projects on the side to get there? Or did you just like by luck land this job at CPA Canada and just learned on the job? Yeah, that's a good question because, you know, a lot of people ask me this as well. And the beauty about the business world is like there's so many different backgrounds. So mm -hmm. it's highly valued to even have like a STEM background in general. Yeah. So I use that to my advantage to really highlight some transferable skills, but definitely I think projects do help on the side. And one way to get into them is just through like hackathons. Mm -hmm. um, hackathons are pretty universal, very incorporate all sorts of backgrounds. So um, I tried to do a couple of those and that helped position some consulting kind of projects. But generally I think also being able to expand your own network and yep. get familiar with the business world was also helpful. Mm -hmm. So now that you're in the business world, do you have any regrets? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, not so much, no. I, I feel like there's still so much to learn. Um, mm -hmm. It gets very corporate-like, um, so I do miss being a little bit hands-on and COVID's not really <laughs> helped that. Yeah. Um, but I really do love it. Like I love the collaboration piece and I feel like science is more about you owning your kind of path. Yeah. But I feel like I like business because it's more, more collaborative and you're in it together so mm -hmm. really love that part of it okay so this is an icebreaker i ask in all of my podcast episodes so if you had all the time in the world what would you be doing that's a good question i would definitely be traveling and mm -hmm. writing i think about my travels or just kind of the growth that i experienced through those journeys yeah. i haven't traveled too much and i'm not a writer at all i think I, I would want to use that time to just be reflective and um, give back in that way. But I, mm -hmm. I think it would also be great just to kind of volunteer across different um, countries. I think it would mm -hmm. be great to kind of give back to those communities and like really reimburse yourself into those communities. Yeah. yeah. 
So your love for travel, is that one of the reasons why you were interested in consulting? It definitely was. And I just joined back <laughs> consulting and I didn't get to travel like at all, <laughs> just between my bed and my laptop. So very little travel, um, but it definitely was an attractive point when I was mm -hmm. going to the consulting firms because that was so attractive to be able to go with some different clients um, and be able to experience a little bit. But in Canada, it's a little bit different, and mm. especially with a big four, like they're so yeah. global that travel sometimes is, it, it has to be like a business case for you yeah. to want to travel, right? Um, like, is there a need when you have such a global company? <laughs> yeah, like if you're based in Canada, you'll only really have clients in Canada, right? Yeah, for, for the most part, like they've been pretty centralized um, to Canada, but mm -hmm. not to say like there has been opportunities to kind of go abroad as well. Yeah. Did you have any opportunities where you did go abroad? <laughs> Me? Not yet. No, I, I, I definitely joined in the pandemic. So, you know, we could mm. talk even a little bit about people interviewing in the pandemic and like um, also just meeting people and onboarding in the pandemic. It's so different, but mm -hmm. like my whole business kind of online family uh, and the consulting world's all virtual. Um, mm -hmm. That's all I've ever known so far. So hopefully in the future we get to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So for, I know like right around now, I think even last year, a lot of people have been starting their jobs virtually. So do you have any tips for anyone who has been starting their jobs virtually remotely on how to get acclimated or basically get successful in their job without the experience of being on site? Yeah, there's a lot to say there because it's so much different, right? Like I've had both experiences where you're yep. in person and you can, you know, grab a coffee with anybody, go for like a fun coffee chat or just walk by someone's desk. Like there's little things that will be tough to experience in a virtual environment, but there's definitely ways to make it a successful experience, especially when it comes to before there's like stuff you could do before and during mm -hmm. and after, but I would say before it's just preparing and getting to know who's on your team as much as possible. Yep. Like, like who's who in the zoo? Like there's so many people and it's not as clear cut, especially when you're with these large consulting firms, like mm -hmm. who is working on what and who's actually a part of your team. So maybe that's one of my tips is really get to know um, and put a face to these names because it's really hard to do that um, virtually. And that would just be a little bit of a homework and kind of <laughs> spying on people and researching who they are. <laughs> Um, but I think it goes a long way because it shows like you're kind of research the backgrounds of folks and you understand where they're coming from. Yeah. But also just trying to be proactive and setting up that time to get to know them. I think another tip would be really just to own your career. And I think I've been focusing on that a little bit more, especially in the COVID environment. Um, and what I mean by that is really just take the initiative to block your own time and mm -hmm. set your own schedule. And especially with consulting, it can get really crazy and nobody's really gonna tell you, like I had previous jobs where it's like, you're gonna do exactly what the job description says. Yeah. Um, but with consulting and especially in onboarding in a virtual environment, really take the ownership of your career in the sense that you're blocking your own time, making yep. me, um, getting to know different people in the firm and setting your own agenda um because it's like no one's really going to tell you like this is exactly what you're mm -hmm. going to do um the first week right so that would be my advice to really kind of look at how you can best be most proactive i guess in your company and also just be stay busy right because mm -hmm. for me like you can have highs and lows like you'll have like a lot of ebbs and flows um during your first couple of weeks with consulting and I would say even first couple of months right um it can get a little bit tricky so just try to stay busy and try to stay occupied um with things that you think will help progress your career yeah I remember when I started my job right out of college I was like okay it must be like an internship I'll get a boot camp and everything and then they'll tell me exactly what to do because that's what an inter internship is mostly like but then that was completely different they're like okay you're off to the wild I'm like what do I do now <laughs> so I had to actually seek mentors seek sponsors go for training and I can't be the one who's like okay you're gonna do this training I have to be the one to seek that training to know that I'm lacking this because like how else will they know that I'm lacking in this skill other than me so that was just something that I learned while I was in consulting. I was like, okay, a lot of it's like you take your own career on by your own hands. And a lot of people expect it that like, okay, your, your people lead, your manager, whatever is going to tell you what you need to do. But that's not the case. If you at least want to advance, otherwise you'll stay within the same level that you'll always be in. Yeah. 
That's so true. Like you're not going to progress and you're not going to make the yeah. most out of it. And that was the advice that as well I got from my MBA as well. Like you get what you put into it, right? Um, mm-hmm. And it's something that you you aren't really going to get spoon fed. So it's really something mm-hmm. that you have to kind of navigate yourself. And that's the beauty of it too. Like if yeah. people are considering the consulting path, like that's the beauty of like customizing consulting to what you want it to be exactly. and set, setting your schedule and more or less kind of, you know, picking and choosing kind of different parts that you want to grow in. Right. So mm-hmm. um, really gives you that flexibility. Yep. So can you actually walk us through your career journey on becoming a technology consultant at EY? Like you started off studying biology and psychology. How did we even get to this point? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of growth and like reflections and tears and all this stuff that happened in between. <laughs> but I would say like I started off, you know, at CPA Canada, it was more of an organizational behavior like role. So there was a lot of enterprise projects at that level. So worked closely with HR um, and finance and technology obviously was a part of it because in my opinion, like every company is a technology company Mm -hmm. and it's going to be a technology company, uh, whether it's a hospital, whether it's CPA Canada, or it could be one of the firms, right? So Mm -hmm. there's so many companies that are just rooted in technology. So one of the first projects I did was launching an ERP system across the organization. It was like 500 people or so. So it wasn't too big of a company, but I didn't even know anything about technology, but I just knew that we have to really launch this system out and get everybody onboarded onto it. So I was like, okay, let's just give this a try. And I found it to be really interesting um, because it was really hands-on. It was also, mm-hmm. you get to, at, our user was like the employees. So you get to yeah. kind of follow them through the journey. So I really liked that because you get to experience the user journey. Um, and that was one part of it. And the other part of it was also just scoping out vendors for this new ERP system. So it was really fun because we got to travel to like, um, these tech conferences in the U.S. and they, I, I, I don't know why, but all these tech conferences <laughs> are so, they're really, really hyped. Um, so I think this was at Palm Springs, so I was like, wow, this is, this is fancy and this is like fantastic to be able to get to know your vendor like one-on-one, right? And mm-hmm. I found that to be really interesting because at the end of the day, you have this ownership of trying to figure out for the company, like what's the yep. best suited technology for them. So this was really early on and keeping in mind, like I had no, I had no technical background. I'm not an engineer, um, had a science background. So I think what really played here is really being able to analyze and see benefits and challenges that come across. And I think when you're in a science and analytical kind of mindset that already is into play. So it's definitely transferable in that way. But after, you know, two and a half years, I felt like I was stuck a little bit and I wanted to be challenged a little bit more um, and also just experience a different type of role. So I decided to go for the MBA here because it was really giving me opportunities to open up doors through different internships. So I specifically chose a program that had three internships, Mm. which is quite a lot for an MBA um, program. But I went on to do my internship at a pension plan. So that was one of my first ones and okay. really great company. It was more internal consulting. So that's interesting too, if you want to consider that because some companies are, although a lot of companies have external consultants, now some companies are trying to grow their own kind of center of expertise, for example. Mm-hmm. So they had like their own center of um, consulting, I would say around change and process improvement. So really interesting how that was set up, but. I felt like I wanted diversity in the types of clients and I wasn't yeah. too interested in the financial industry at that point. Um, so I moved into a role, more of an operational role, just to kind of experience a different industry. So I worked at Baxter, which is a healthcare company. Um, really great as well. Like I love the global mission, um, but it lacked a bit of tech, tech um, in it. And it was very mm-hmm. much just operational. Um, like you get to experience technology because you're using like SAP, for example, but you're not really designing it. You're not really a part of that journey. So I wasn't really satisfied in that role. And I decided in my last internship that, you know, 
I love projects. I love working in teams. I love a global client base. And that's all of those kind of factors kind of led me to EY um, specifically mm-hmm. um, to technology consulting, because what I loved about this group was that technology transformation, like there's so many things that could fit into that. Like you can be yeah. consulting with so many different companies um, and you don't have to specialize in a technology early on. It's more the strategic lens. So that's kind of what led me to this. But um, I wouldn't have known, like, to be honest with you, Christine, like, I didn't even know what consulting was until, <laughs> like, maybe a year or two ago, right? Um, oh, wow. So it really just opened my doors because, like, when you're in a science background, you're, like, stuck in labs, like, nobody talks about internships or jobs. Exactly. or Like, you're just, you're so, like, in a bubble. And, like, it really just opened my eyes um, when I especially did my MBA. And not to say like people, you don't have to do your MBA to get into consulting. Like it's just one way that it helped me Mm -hmm. transition. And I would advise like any kind of master's program or any kind of work experience, like you can really build yourself to get into consulting. Mm -hmm. And actually speaking about the MBA, do you think that it is a good move for some people that are in a non-business area to go into business? Or do you think that there's other ways to get into it? I definitely think there's more than one way to get into it. Um, solely speaking from the di- diversity that I see in my team, like okay. we have people from masters in like health informatics or masters in management or masters in engineering. So there's so many different ways to get in, not that you need a master's to get into mm-hmm. consulting, but it definitely is a way that helps build your profile. And yeah. it also gets you to experience different things. And the MBA is like, very much one of those things that you do for your own kind of career path. Like everybody does something different after and consulting yeah. is just one option. Um, so I wouldn't say it's necessary, but it definitely can help you get there. Um, and mm-hmm. I definitely think it did help me. Um, but I would say that it really just depends on the right time, right? Like right now it's yeah. virtual too. So I'm not even sure if that's the best move for people. Mm. So um, highly would recommend kind of scoping out the programs and what really attracted me was not the MBA. Like I wasn't, I didn't even really know what an MBA was until I got into the business okay. world, like after. Um, but I, I think what helped me was seeing that there was work opportunities associated with this MBA program. So I was like, oh, that's really good. Cause you get to kind of, for the lack of a better term, like date different companies and <laughs> figure out, you know, what do I like about them? Well, is this the right fit for me? Um, yeah. So that really helps out. Mm-hmm. So one thing that I feel like a lot of people ask is how much does MBA actually help on the job for consulting? Mm. Yeah, I, I, you know, like for me, the experience has been really transferable. Like it's been, there's a lot of parallels. So MBAs are often based in very case based. Um, courses. So any course that you're kind of taking has a lot of case analysis and Mm -hmm. by cases, you're kind of working with teams, you're working on delivering not very like independent um, kind of uh, deliverables, but it's very collaborative. So I think that collaborative nature is super transferable because you're like, for me, like I realized when I was going through the MBA and I was going through my internship and consulting in general, I was like, oh, there's a lot of teamwork and there's a lot Mm -hmm. of you can have a task in hand but like navigating personalities navigating work ethics getting people to get things done that is super transferable um and generally i think an mba kind of opens your eyes to what's happening in the market um whether it's in marketing or hr and finance and i think it's really helpful to have like a collective lens Mm -hmm. and i do think that's helpful in consulting now um but I don't think the growth stops at an MBA. You're not going to just do an okay. MBA and just know everything about consulting. Like definitely it's just the foundation that it just helps you build a business mindset. But I would think that, you know, that learning is continuous and I'm a hundred percent for that. You learn your work and your job and consulting on, on, on job. So you don't really need to know a lot before, but if you have the right mindset and attitude, like I think that goes a really long way and helping mm-hmm. develop your consulting career. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And then pivoting into that experience, going into technology consulting. So do you know like what it takes to grow as a leader in consulting? It doesn't have to be just in consulting, it could be technology consulting or magic consulting, if anything. Yeah, that's, that's, that's tough. Like I've seen a lot of leaders, like I'm surrounded by really amazing leaders and I'm, I'm trying to like think of, you know, what do you, <laughs> what did I, what do I think they did um, to get there? One is I, 
I feel like they first started off just getting to build their consulting toolkit. So, mm -hmm. and this is advice that I've gotten from leaders as well as and mentors as well is really just use the first couple of years to really be a good consultant. So whether mm -hmm. that's in technology consulting or generally management consulting, like what are things that I need in my toolkit? So like just building analysis skills, stakeholder engagement and knowing how to communicate. Like I've never seen so much business writing as being a focus, like <laughs> it, even within tech consulting and maybe it's a strategy side, like that's a huge skill set that I think is underestimated and it's really tough to um, write a simple message and it's really easy to overcomplicate it. So I think yeah. being able to articulate yourself in so many different ways um, is really what the first couple of years are like. And I think it sets you up to be a really great leader because you've been there, you've been through the works, you understand um, different aspects of consulting. Um, and the second would be to be a sponge and kind of learn learn all, but also learn about how different parts of the company that you're at, for example, are integrated with each other. So mm -hmm. I've seen great leaders like just being very resourceful. So no one leader like really knows anything. <laughs> like <laughs> they have to rely on other people. And so you have to yeah. really be able to build a network but I think organically if no one if when you're a leader like no one's handed over like hey you, you got this title now and you suddenly have all this network with yeah. you right it, it's a journey so you kind of have to build that along the way so definitely for aspiring leaders and someone like myself too like that's what I'm aiming for is really to build that um, community and like support around you and it also helps you knowledge share and also helps you lean on each other. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're working with a firm, it's usually just one voice, right, to the client. So it's really helpful to build that. And the last thing I would say is more in the market, like know what's happening um, in different industries, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of knowledge is something that you can't really expect your firm to give you. It's more of you actively researching into um, whichever industry it is and yep. being knowledgeable. And I think that comes with time as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. I think like a lot of times people say, you know, like be a sponge and everything. I think that's what everyone says about being consulting because you have like the perfect opportunity. It's like a playground, if anything, to try yeah. all these different clients, all these different projects, and you just have to absorb it. And each time you just take a little bit about what you learned along the way for the next project and you'll become a well-rounded uh, consultant there. So one thing I did want to know is that like currently at EY, you're a strategy and technology transformation consultant. What exactly does that mean? Like what kind of projects do you do? Yeah, it, it's a mouthful and like it, they restructure often. So um, <laughs> that's just the essence of like, you know, we're under technology transformation, mm -hmm. but like a focus in technology strategy. And what that really means is like, usually when you're working with, I guess, diverse clients that can give you examples, but you're really helping them think from a transformation lens, like how they can set up what we call a target operating model. Mm -hmm. An operating model for technology is like anything that the technology, like when you're implementing a new technology, before you do that, you have to set your company up right for okay. you to be able to adopt a new technology, for example. So there's different kind of projects that can fall under this, but it sounds it, like a little bit of change management, right? There's a lot of, I mean, change management is definitely one component of it, right? Okay. Um, it's looking at like, how does your processes change? How, is, there's people is a huge part of that, but mm -hmm. it's also looking at, you know, it could be you setting up a new dashboard for a company yeah. to measure performance, right? So before you get the implementation folks to come in and set up that dashboard, you're, you're strategically thinking about what actually is needed um, okay. um, from that perspective. So it's kind of a step before implementation, I would say. Mm -hmm. And some people call it functional kind of side of consulting. Um, and it really is there to help um, the clients out with that. And mm -hmm. another thing that we, I think, do and have done in the past is a lot of technology kind of assessments too. Yep. So you're helping companies realize like, you know, which vendor to go for. Um, and that is really interesting type of work because it's not your, your personal kind of motive, but you're kind of helping, you're in it mm -hmm. with the client to figure out, you know, it's kind of like shopping a little bit, right? Like which, which, which. which You're their personal buyer. <laughs> yeah, it's a personal buyer. It's, it's really fun. Like I love that part, right? Because you realize that there's 
all these vendors offering these products, but it gives you a strategic lens because you're thinking of the long term for the business and what aligns with their goals. So it's a lot of vision setting. It's a lot of goal setting. It's a lot of designing the future state for them. Mm -hmm. So technology is always like an enabler of that. And there's, you know, you could be working with a healthcare kind of company and a, a hospital, for example, and helping them design the future state. But it's usually the what. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of the how comes in through the implementation um, side of things. So yep. we don't really do a lot of that. I think the first step for this client is trying to figure out the future vision. Um, so it's really interesting in that way to be able to set up strategy. And I know strategy is always an umbrella term, so it means a lot of different things to different people. But um, that's how I've really seen it playing out, especially for EY. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if it's like before the implementation side, I, and you also somewhat called it functional, I'm actually a functional consultant too in the workday financial space. So I think like, I'm just kind of curious about on your day to day, do you get a lot of, I mean, virtually at least like a whiteboard experience where like, okay, throw all your problems on the board, tell me like how we can organize it kind of way. So is that like what you would do to kind of see designing what their current strategy is and seeing how you can em enable it with technology? Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to know what you guys are using for your whiteboarding. <laughs> we do a lot of like. We actually just end up using PowerPoint and like whiteboarding on PowerPoint and moving things around. Um, and I don't know if that's the most effective way, but we've tried mural and like different ways. Mm. But I would say there's a lot of. It sounds very similar to yourself, like some design thinking component to that. Yep. I mean, obviously we don't have those post-it notes to kind of play around, but those workshops are really fun to do with clients when you're kind of co-developing, understanding current state. I, what I've noticed, like people don't really like talking about their current problem. Like they get really excited, <laughs> like, oh, in the future we could do this, right? So it is fun to do that. But I think even a back kind of backup step to that and backup to functional consulting is really finding the root cause. And we do a lot of kind of problem statement type mm -hmm. of like uh, workshops and it takes time. Like you would think that you're presented with a problem from the client and that's it, right? But mm -hmm. usually defining what that problem is is actually really hard and you have to really kind of figure out what actually is the root cause of this and articulate really well, like what's the vision behind this? So yeah, definitely whiteboarding, especially when you're thinking of different kind of process flows, um, not to the level of a workflow where it gets yeah. really technical, but it's to the level of like high level, this is how we think these parties should interact with each other and engage with each other to make this outcome happen. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm not sure if that's something that you guys as well experience doing. Actually, I'm more in the tech space, so I don't actually do that much whiteboarding. If anything, I mean, we, we, in person, yes, I do a whiteboarding, but not exactly the way you're talking about with the post-its and whatnot. Uh, instead, what I do is like I literally draw the process out and we talk things out and then I would put like little notes under it and we would move things around at least with like a little, I don't know what, what you call it, like the marker kind of thing. So we don't do any <laughs> yeah. posts that way, but uh, at least in our design sessions, honestly, that's my favorite part of consulting is that session is really trying to work, work things through and see like, okay, how can we make your current state into future state? What can we do with the software to make that happen? But I do it more with the technology. I actually implement that in the software it's, itself is like with the actual logic and the process flow. And that's where it gets a little bit more technical. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's really just like, okay, give me all your problems, give me all your questions, and then I'll make it happen. Yeah. And then yeah. once I actually make it happen, I confirm with them, does this look pretty similar to what you're looking for? And if they, they test it out, see if it works. And if it does, then we move it into production. So that's essentially mm -hmm. how I do it. Um, I like the whiteboarding experience, but it's just, I haven't been on a project while we were remote where I actually got to do something like that. It was really just mostly we're on like OneNote, we're on Excel or uh, like your version of PowerPoint, we're doing a Word document or something like that. And then we just like move things around, copy paste. <laughs> it's, it's like not really the best way to do it. But um, hopefully now we can go back on site soon and actually get a process like that back to normal. Yeah, and you know, it reminds me like that's interesting you say that because it, it is a really different, you know, experience um, yeah. in a virtual environment. And what you know, kind of you've made kind of consulting 101 is like when you have like a senior leader like draw mm -hmm. out something, they actually draw it out and then they send yeah. you a picture of it and they're like, hey, this is what <laughs> this is what we want to see. And I'm like, this is what whiteboarding is now because you can tell like people are struggling really to translate the kind of thoughts um, yeah. on a virtual environment. So I've definitely had that happen a multiple times, kind of 
just get like a scribble of you know, a diagram. <laughs> you're like, okay, just make this happen, right? Um, and it's like, okay, like we'll try to do that. Um, but yeah, PowerPoint's kind of been key and it seems it's pretty good. It has some whiteboarding in it, but definitely it'll be interesting to see how folks collaborate in like hybrid. Cause I think, mm -hmm. I think USC, you're, you're a little bit ahead of us, but um, Canada's opening up slowly and surely. Um, <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see like once it's flexible work arrangement, like maybe there's half of you in an actual room together and, mm -hmm. and there's half of you that aren't, right? So how do you effectively create products and deliver both together that way? Yeah, and um, I don't even know anyone right now who's on site for these kind of sessions. I know if anything, I do know people who have gone on site, but they're mostly for the pre-sales, uh, like the oral support of it. So. Uh, so I did see that you have a PMP certification. I'm just kind of curious, like, have you used it yet? Or like, is it just something you just got to see like, okay, yeah, maybe I'll use it eventually. It probably will help me as a consultant. Have you seen that it actually did help you as a consultant or did it even help you land that job at EY? Yeah, so I actually had my internship last summer, so in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went back for my last second of academic um, MBA semester mm -hmm. during like that transition I had a little bit of a like a month off and I was like you know like I really was always kind of aspiring towards a project management um yeah I'm not picky about like I need this designation to get me to like this uh, opportunity like I knew yeah. at that time I was coming back to EY so it wasn't a matter of um trying to get into EY okay. but I think it was a matter of me just developing my skill set um so there's a couple of things I would say like the PMP was really great um to kind of solidify concepts of project management and mm -hmm. I do do a lot of project management um I think it's inevitable in your consulting role like if you're not project managing the team you're project managing your own work and your own clients yeah. um, you have to understand the terminology, in my opinion. Um, it's pretty universal. Uh, the it's really helpful when the language is the same, and I think it helps you anchor with the clients, um, mm -hmm. and they appreciate when you talk in a project management mindset, and it also keeps you accountable. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of benefits to learning project management, and I would even advise people that have done all sorts of projects, like this is a great opportunity uh, even to pivot into consulting with PMP PML. Yep. I would say it also helps um, your credibility usually when you're being presented um, to clients and you're being staffed onto different projects like having a designation like a PMP doesn't hurt you right um, mm -hmm. it makes you it position it positions you for different um, opportunities so I would definitely say it's something kind of that I'm happy that I did I think it was yeah. a lot better than the GMAT <laughs> <laughs> like the GMAT was just I don't even know like it wasn't helpful like the, when you go towards an MBA before that like it's just like why am I even doing this right it's very <laughs> it, it doesn't make business sense to me um there's a lot of logical stuff but yeah PMP is directly work related so okay. it was helpful in that way okay so moving forward like what are your short-term and long-term career goals do you think that you want to do something more in consulting maybe specialize something in consulting or even eventually go into project management yeah, that's a good question. Um, I feel like I'm always asking myself like my own three year plan, five year plan. It's, it's really, really tough. I think it goes back to what you said before the playground right now. Like I'm definitely at that stage of experiencing different clients, experiencing different parts of consulting and really trying to figure out what I like about it and what I find a little bit maybe off putting. So I think what I want to focus on is really developing some sort of SMEs or some kind of subject matter expertise in an area um, and really developing that domain expertise. So I'd love that opportunity to kind of grow within um, tech strategy for a certain kind of industry, for example. Um, so I'm still kind of trying to figure out that path and what it takes to get there, how long it takes to get there. Um, but Definitely project management's always been a part of it. I think that'll stay, but it's what I'm looking most forward to is really just managing a team. I think that I've kind of always aspired to be in a managerial type of role and like lead other folks. Um, obviously, the new interns come in, you, you get to mentor them and you get to senior, be a senior to them. So there's a lot of that kind of path and that when I think of goals, like like being in a, some leadership position, whether it's not a senior leader, but it is a leadership position in the sense that you are mentoring others and you're guiding others. I think that is definitely one of my goals for now. All right, yeah. so I think we're 
ending off the podcast. So can you tell me like, what have you been up to lately? <laughs> what have I been up to? So the lockdown has definitely been unlocked a little bit in <laughs> Canada. So I think it was just as of this weekend. So definitely nice. been up to a lot of just outdoors and really getting fresh air and being able to recharge yourself. So mm-hmm. looking forward to kind of going hiking, probably going to go out west to the Rockies, the Canadian Rockies, um, and go <laughs> go a little bit on the mountains, but definitely just been enjoying outdoors. Um, I do a little bit of teaching as well on the side and help kind of mentor other um, students recently got involved in that. So it was really fun to kind of mentor other people um, looking to build their consulting um, skill sets. So it was affiliated with the university. So it's not something that mm-hmm. I'm doing kind of on my own, but really just generally love giving back to this um, mentee kind of community and mm-hmm. consulting. Yeah. yeah. And definitely being part of this podcast has helped probably all the listeners that are listening right now. Yeah, I know. Definitely. If anyone has questions around big four consulting, interviewing, really happy to lend a helping hand and be able to give any guidance that I can. Great. Sounds good. And where can we find you on social media if we wanted to reach out to you? I'm a little bit on and off with social media, but definitely it would be just my LinkedIn on the okay. on there. Um, I'm on Clubhouse. I've been a little bit stagnant right there. I think just waiting for them to improve their platform a little bit yeah. more. Um, but yeah, definitely it would just be around LinkedIn. Yeah, I've been pretty stagnant on clubhouse to be honest too i think a lot of people who first started off they're like okay i'm dying off the hype and then now it's got to come back up for the people who come in on android and now they're like oh no one's here (laughs) it's so true i I hear you and i think you have a mentoring tech kind of event coming up so if anyone Mm -hmm. not sure when this will go out but definitely looking forward to that event as well perfect right so lastly do you have any advice for the woman out there women getting into consulting yep I would say definitely go for it. It is a place where you'll see that maybe you're not surrounded by people that look like you, sound like you in the room, Mm -hmm. but there's definitely a place for you. And I feel like as a woman, you can do anything um, Mm -hmm. with your career. So if this is something that you want to excel at, it definitely is a place where you can fit. And there's definitely a need for diversity. So 100% recommend anyone to follow that path as well. All right. Thank you so much for being part of this episode. And all of her social media links will be down below, specifically her LinkedIn, because I don't think there's anything else out there. But uh, (laughs) maybe I can put in your clubhouse as well. So once we do have some events on there, we'll meet you there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much, Christine. Thank you so much.